Hi, friends. I'm so excited to make this video for you. I'm jangling. See? See, see, I got my, I, I got my jinglers on here. I got three of these. You should see where the third one is. What? It's on my tail. Where, where'd you think I'd have it? Oh. Anyway, I've been wanting to make this video for you every Christmas, but I always ran out of time. But I'm gonna give it a go this year. We're talking about that holiday perennial miracle on 34th Street, second only perhaps to A Christmas Carol in popularity at this time of year for Christmas movies. You've seen this before. This is one of my little treasures. It's a hardbound version of the story written by author and screenwriter Valentine Davies. This is a condensed version, probably meant for magazines like the Saturday Evening Post or Collier's or one of those. And the book was published in 1947 to coincide with the release of the motion picture we all know and love, Miracle on 34th Street. The story basically goes like this. Macy's, the big real-life department store, is having its annual Thanksgiving Day Parade, but they don't have a Santa Claus, the appearance of which is the highlight of the parade and signals the beginning of the Christmas shopping season. This was before we had stores flogging Christmas in friggin' August. Anyway, who should appear but a man who calls himself Chris Kringle? And as it turns out, really believes he's Santa Claus. He becomes the official Santa in Macy's main store in New York City and begins working a Christmas miracle, not just in the store, but in the whole city and beyond. He begins to win over one of the store's management team, Doris Walker, unlucky in love, She's a single mom who has dispensed with any sort of fairy tales about life. And her precocious daughter doesn't believe in Santa Claus. They become a test case for Chris to see if Santa still has a place in the modern world. Unfortunately, the villain of the piece is the store's staff psychologist, Mr. Sawyer. They had stuff like that back then. This guy thinks Kringle is crazy and sets out to get rid of him. This leads to a trial to determine if Chris is Crackers or Kringle. It's a phenomenal film, full of great performances and a fine, fine cast, shot on location in Macy's department store and during the famous parade as both were in 1947. In our cast is Maureen O'Hara as Doris, Edmund Gwen as Chris, and we have a young Natalie Wood as Susan, Doris's daughter. Love interest and next door neighbor Fred Gailey is played by John Payne. He's a young lawyer who defends Chris. Gene Lockhart plays the judge, Porter Hall is Mr. Sawyer, the psychologist, and Fred Mertz himself, William Frawley, is here as the judge's campaign manager. There's also a slew of other character actors who may be familiar, like Thelma Ritter, and silent comedian Snub Pollard and silent star Mae Marsh briefly appear. Jeff Corey has a role as a reporter, and most notably, this guy at the post office. That's Jack Albertson. Don't recognize him? Well, how about now? That's right, he was the man from Chico and the Man. He's here. There's really nothing like this film and nothing to top it. This is the best, most definitive version of Miracle on 34th Street you will ever see. Director George Seaton liked this so much, he and Davies made another film called Chicken Every Sunday in 1949, which sports some of the same cast. Natalie Wood, Porter Hall, William Frawley, Percy Helton, Snub Pollard, and so on. I haven't seen that one, but I really want to, though. As for our movie, there's so much to talk about this film, but I wanted to share some other versions of Miracle on 34th Street with you. First up, we have the version from 1955. 
This was made for television and is in the public domain, so far as I know. Character actor Thomas Mitchell is Chris. McDonald Carey plays Fred. Teresa Wright plays Doris. And Hans Conried plays the head of the toy department. Ray Collins from Perry Mason is also here. And our old friend Whit Bissell from the Star Trek Tribble episode is also on hand. Being made for TV, this one is rather condensed and lacks some of the substance of the film. It still has a lot of charm, though, and they went to the trouble of casting Herbert Hayes. He reprises his role as rival store owner Mr. Gimble from the original film. A nice touch. There's another TV version from 1959, which starred Ed Wynn as Chris, but I can't find that anywhere. I'd love to see it. So let's talk about the more recent version instead. From 1994, Richard Attenborough stars as Chris, and Dylan McDermott is his lawyer. William Wyndham, also from Star Trek, Commodore Decker is here. Jane Levy's from Frasier is on hand. Joss Ackland and James Remar are both in this. They had to update some things and change some names and whatnot, but it's still a really excellent go at making Miracle on 34th Street. And get this, the doorman we see outside Dory's apartment building is Alvin Greenman. Greenman played the young store worker Alfred, who befriends Chris in the 1947 film. Nice to see that DNA in the remake. And then I found this version from 1973, a TV movie with a cast chock full of familiar faces. Sebastian Cabot from Family Affair plays Chris, and he's wonderful. David Hartman, a very familiar face on TV back in the day, he plays the lawyer. Jim Backus plays the manager of the toy department. Roddy McDowell, in an excellent turn, plays the staff psychologist, Mr. Sawyer. Tom Bosley is the judge, and James Gregory is the district attorney. David Doyle from Charlie's Angels plays Mr. Macy. Famous face Bert Mustin appears as well. Again, they've changed some names and condensed a few things and expanded others, but this is really an amazing and unsung version of Miracle on 34th Street. It looks as if everything here was actually shot on location, too. It's not on DVD or streaming or anything, which is a crime, but some kind soul did put a copy up here on YouTube so you can see it. And it's well worth seeing if you love this story. Finally, why not? We have this offering. Love at the Thanksgiving Day Parade from 2012. This is a Hallmark romance movie, so you know what you're in for. But this isn't about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. No, instead, this is the Chicago Thanksgiving Day Parade. I, I guess they have one. And the parade may have to be canceled on account of the big store running it doesn't have any money. Besides, no doubt everyone is home watching the Macy's parade anyway. They bring in a consultant to go over the books and offer ideas. He's a local boy who made good and is now back home. This retro chick is the parade organizer. Not Doris Walker loves the parade and all of its traditions. Not Henry Cavill is a bottom line money man type. Naturally, not Henry Cavill and not Doris Walker lock horns and then fall in love. No spoiler there. Notice not Doris Walker wearing these retro looking outfits. I guess they wanted to evoke the more famous love story from 1947's Miracle on 34th Street featuring the Macy's Parade. That's why the main character is conveniently all into retro stuff so she can wear these retro outfits. She's played by Autumn Reeser. She was on the OC, among other things. Not Henry Cavill here. The love interest is played by Antonio Cupo. He's done several Hallmark movies. I think he could have gone further than that, though. Both are very good in this, and I like this one. It's sweet. It has a nice jazzy soundtrack. And while mostly shot in Toronto, they do have some nice location footage of Chicago to set the place. 
It's not scary Chicago, but sitcom nice Chicago. The couple has good chemistry and the story moves along nicely. The retro chick is a little quirky and for what this is, it was very enjoyable. So there you go, miracles can happen. I hope your Christmas is happy and not crapper. Boy, they, these jinglers are a little annoying, aren't they? Get, get, get off me. Get, get, get off, get, get off me. Get.